Hey gamers, we're back with um Ace Attorney Chronicles. Last off. Last left off, we Oh, okay. Witnesses! I trust you heard the summation examination we have just had to endure. Oh, yes, sir, that I did, sir. Hmm. Of course I heard it. Oh, oh yes, sir, I heard it. You, sir, on the end, the coachman. I believe it's Beppo. <laughs> yes, sir, my lord, sir. If it transpires that in your previous testimony, you were attempted to veil the presence of a fifth passenger on your omnibus, you will be found guilty of perjury. You are advised to bear that in mind, sir. <laughs> oh, mio dio! Uh... Now then, witnesses, I hereby call on you to testify before the court again. <laughs> you will explain the various misgivings brought to our attention by the defense's summation examination. I, uh, I only carried four passengers that I, I swear, but, uh... Well, I for one was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. He fiddled us on the fare, he did. And then I saw that blood curdle inside as well. It's all too much! I tell you, I saw Miss Gilded stab in that man. Everything I said before starts. Oh, yes, yes, he, he stabbed him. Yes, he did. Uh, I think so, yes. Council, make sense of this for me, please. The phantom fifth passenger conjured into existence by my learned eastern friend never existed. The confusion has arisen from the coachman's sly little cozenage. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Beffo, explain yourself. Did, what was the voice I gave him? I don't give a fuck. I, I'm terribly sorry, Guildmaster. The guild's fare is four pence across the board. You know that. Am I to understand that you've been overcharging our passengers by a penny a fare? <gasps> it's it's so cold. And the last one of the day is always half empty. You have been dishonest, Coachman. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, it wasn't perjury, so... You're a disgrace, Beppo! A disgrace! And your selfish actions have brought dishonor on the entire guild! If I may, sir, I had to pay ten pence on the bus just last week. What?! Four passengers at five pencheistas. Yes, twenty pence. I've done the arithmetic ten times already, but I just can't make the result come out differently. No, that figures. Well, it would appear that one of the aforementioned misgivings has already been explained. So, counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, if you please. We've already had the pleasure of a protracted summation examination today. I see you intend to continue the parlor games. Uh, absolutely. As I was saying, last left off, we, uh, realized that we were already in part two, and, uh, Last list, last list off, I, like, uh, cross-examined all the jurors, and I made them realize that there were contradictions in the testimonies, so I convinced them all to let the trial go on, to rescind their verdict. Various misgivings. I only care four passengers that I, I swear, but, uh... Well, I, for one, was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. Hold it! Does that mean everyone on board that night paid five pence instead of four? Well, well, I paid five pence too, sir. Hmm. Continue. And I just told you that I did. Uh, uh, five, fair, uh, five pence across the board. It's not something to be proud of. A so-called discrepancy my learned friend identified was nothing of the sort. Much like the phantom killer you so desperately needed, it's gone. Dead and buried. 
I'd have been happy if it had ever existed in the first place. He fiddled us on the fair, he did. And then I saw that blood color inside as well. It's, it's all too much. Hold it! This blood curl in sight. I mean the murder, I presume. Yes, sir. Huh. Are, why do you look like that? Excuse me. Well, Mr. Beppo. Oh, me, sir. Do you have something to add in relation to that last statement? Well, sir, there is just one thing, sir. Oh, I actually did something. I was wondering what's going to become of my omnibus, sir. Damn it. After the trial. What do you mean? I can't help wondering. Would no one want to ride in a cursed carriage someone was killed in? Or will everyone want to ride in it? Yes, the cursed carriage could be an attraction, maybe. It could be. Let's stay close to a moment for me. Oh, yes, I think it will be. Well, if you could just focus on the testimony for the time being, please. I tell you, I saw Mr. McGill to stab that man. Everything I said before stands. Hold it! So you saw the defendant, Mr. McGill, did stab in the victim, Mr. Mason, who was sitting next to him? That's... that's what I said, isn't it? Oh, right, there's the other... Uh... Excuse me! You look nervous. Mr. First! Oh, how can I help you, sir? That last statement. Did it trouble you in some way? Oh, um, not particularly, sir. No! If anything, he's troubling me with that hat of his. Has he greased his head? Oh dear, sir. I hope my hat's not troubling you, sir. I'm still just an apprentice, do you see? All your clothes are oversized, Mr. Naruhodo. Even the witnesses can see what's going through your mind. You really must be more careful. Ah, I wish it were that simple. Okay, let me try. He stabbed him. Yes, it did. I think so. Yes. Let's see what Naruhodo has to say. Not long ago, this trial very nearly came to an end. Somehow, we've managed to keep our chances alive here. I can't waste this cross-examination. I have to use it to bring some new facts to light. Hmm, if we're not careful when you press these witnesses. The danger is that the jury will end up believing something unhelpful as they did before. Maybe. But we can't let the fear that happen and stop us from uncovering important new information. <gasps> yes, you're so right. I need to pay careful attention here. I don't want to miss even a flicker of a reaction among these witnesses. Remember, if you happen to spot one of the witnesses reacting in a strange way, don't hesitate to pursue them as to the reason. Okay, so we do after. Okay, never. Let's just press them again. Hold it. So there were only four passengers on your carriage, but you didn't charge them the standard four pence fare. Is that right? Nah, he's just normally like that. It's impossible to make the last run of the day. Hey, I was so cold I could do is stop myself but pass it out. I'm getting chill, Blaine's just listening to you. It was terrible, so I wanted to get myself a pat on the back for even keeping the bus running. Doesn't a dedicated coachman deserve an extra penny per passenger? You're digging a deeper hole for yourself here. If only there had been a fifth passenger on the omnibus that night, then we would have had another suspect. Fuck off. Ban. I, for one, was sort of had to pay five pence for the bus. He filled us on the fare, he did. And then I saw the blood on inside. It was all too much. Stabbing that man. Hold it! So you saw the defendant, Mr. McGilded, stabbing the victim, Mr. Mason, who was sitting next to him? That's... that's what I said, isn't it? Uh... It was bothering me before this was. For just a brief moment, he hesitated before answering the question. Anyway, there was only the two of them inside the carriage, wasn't there? There's been much talk of the fifth patch. Blah, 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 blah. Then what are we wasting all this time for, eh? This black and white, the man's guilty. Something about Mr. Fairplay's testimony just jars with me. Wish I could work out what it was. It was the fact that there was a... I think so, yes. Let me look at... Oh, wait, wrong one. 
I can't look at the court wreck. Shit. New facts. Let's see. Doctor's ledger. The victim who owed 25 guineas. I mean, 20 guineas. Better look at this. This portfolio must contain all sorts of secrets of London's gentry. Oh dear. Do you really think we ought to look inside? Well, it's not as though we know any of London's gentry personally, is it? Apart from a great detective friend, perhaps. Actually, I wonder. I assure you we will not find Mr. Sholmes' name inside. Well, let's see what we find. Gosh, it's crammed full of gentlemen's names, isn't it? Well, I suppose they're probably not all gentlemen at all, are they? After all, not everyone in this country is well off. Ah, goodness! What is it? Look at this! Do you see the name here? Bruce Fairplay. Should that mean something to me? It does sound strangely familiar, actually. <gasps> Bruce Fairplay, the witness testifying at this very moment! Oh, yes, of course! The banker! Why is his name in here? Ah, uh, he borrowed 20 guineas, did he? And look, the repayment date is fast approaching. It's possible that this is just a coincidence, of course. But this could be very useful information. The details of the debtor's ledger have been updated. Would have had to pay his room immediately. Okay. So, I guess... Gotta press them. Why can't I just skip this? Jet! Okay. Okay. But, well, I phone was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. Build us on the fair. I tell you, I saw McGilded stab that man. Everything I said before. Everything? Does that include... I'm gonna save, because I don't know... Shit, wrong one. Uh... Objection. No. That reveals a damn inconsistency, that last statement. Damn, you say? Uh. Fuck me. Okay, let's start over. Oh, whoa. Oh, yes, he stabbed him. Yes, he did. I think so, yes. No! Come on! Oh, wait a minute. I can just... Quicker! Okay. He fiddled us on the fair. I'll just have to press him again. So you saw the defendant, Mr. McGood, is stabbing the victim, Mr. Mason, who was sitting next to him? That's... That's what he said, isn't it? He hesitated. Okay, so what? Was I... I couldn't... Hmm. Oh, that's terrible. Maybe I could press him. Earlier, you testified that you saw the moment when the defendant allegedly stabbed the victim, didn't you? Yes, that's right. Oh, that's just one. He said that the victim was on the floor and described the assailant holding the knife in an ice pick grip. I suppose I might have, you know, yes, put the cart before the horse, maybe? What's this? Well, I'm c quite sure about most dogs of it. I was driving the horse when I heard the scream from the f f f seat to the roof deck. Oh, I expect that was me, sir. Then when I turned around, yes, I saw it through the skylight. Uh... Excuse me. That could be nervous tick, I don't know. God damn it. What are you fossicking for now? That last statement appears to have given you pause for thought. Not really. 
By the way, you always seem to be looking to the side one way or another. Do you have some affliction? Not really. Uh, uh, that used to be a problem I had, like my neck. But for, I, my neck kept craning to the side for some reason. Don't know what it was. It's not really willing to say anything, it seems. Ugh. Again! Okay, let me think. If... If it's that statement where he says that the guy was stabbed, that's the inconsistency. I'll just have to gauge him on every reaction. Press on this one. I had to look up walkthrough because I was honestly lost. That's right. Uh... About most of it, I was driving the horses. Then when I turned around, yes, I saw it through the sky. He shook his head. You didn't see the moment that when the victim was actually stabbed at all? I really thought that I did, but... When I go over it again in my head... No, I suppose I didn't actually see the precise moment of the stabbing. Truth. Excuse me. How did I miss that? Do you have something to say about that, Mr. Fairplay? Now you listen to me. I know what you're thinking. You didn't really see the exact moment the fellow was stabbed. What are the chances of that? Hey. Well, are you asking me or telling me? He's getting flustered. Hooba. I might be able to extract some new information from him if I answer him cleverly. Could you have just happen to see the exact moment the crime was committed? No chance! Well, it is a little hard to believe, certainly. Unless you spend your time peeping through a skyline on the top of an omnibus, that is. What? Peeping? I'm my respectable city banker, I'll have you know. And I know what I saw. I remember it clear as a ballerick day. It was a grim scene, I don't mind telling you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fairplay. Oh, excuse me if I was getting a little hot under the collar there, my lord. I would ask you to supplement your testimony with a clear statement about what exactly you saw. Oh, I can do that all right. I'll tell you just how grim it was. Do you think I'd forget the sight of those blood-soaked hands after that butcher stabbed the man? Oh, I got you now, fucker. Objection. Blood-soaked hands, you say? Oh, well, I admit that soaked might be laying it on a little thick, but... But anyway, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them were covered in it. Well, I'm very sorry to disagree, Mr. Fairplay, but that's more than a little peculiar. What? Here are the gloves worn by the defendant, Mr. McGilded, on the night in question. Oh, yes. Right. And there certainly does appear to be a sizable dark-colored stain here, but as I'm sure you can clearly see... <laughs> it's only on the right-hand glove. Oh, I thought you were going to say, but he, his hands weren't soaked in gloved, it was the f his, his hands weren't soaked in blood, it was his gloves. Mamma mia, I'm a guilty, a guilty. I'm not doing that joke again. In short, Mr. Fairplay, your testimony is inconsistent. Yeah, but, 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 no, that can't be right. So you're the liar here, then. Yeah. Well, that's right. You were quite clear about it. You said Burr. it was both hands. Do you need any help there, buddy? Burr. Mr. Fairplay, if your last statement was a lie, it calls your entire testimony into question. You say you saw the moment the victim was stabbed, but is that really the truth? Ah, guy. Well, I. Objection. It was a simple mistake. You can't justify accusing this man of lying. Yes, 
Yes, it wasn't both hands, it was only one. But the fact remains... The victim's blood was on the accused. Objection. No, Mr. Fairway categorically stated that he saw blood all over both hands. Which means there's a strong possibility that this witness was deliberately trying to mislead the court. Gah! Why? Why? I'm a city banker for business sake. Why? Why would should be the, the, the gold standard? I'm a gentleman, not some gutter sniper. Upstanding members of society don't prevaricate. He's claiming to have no reason to lie. But is that really the case? Mr. Narhoto, if he had some evidence to explain why Mr. Fairplay might be lying, it could turn the tide in this trial completely. Something to show this man has compelling reason to lie in this testimony? I have evidence! My lord. Uh, yes, counsel. The defense is ready to present evidence. By Jove, are you sure? Yes, evidence that will clearly demonstrate why Mr. Fairplay had reason to lie in his testimony. Yeah! Very well. I hereby call on the defense to present its evidence. The evidence that demonstrates a motive for the witness's alleged deception of the court. Take that! This is a list of the debtors who owe money to Mr. McGillard. Yes, a list of innocent victims crippled by the accused extortion. No arguments there. The point is, among the names of these debtors is your name. Mr. Bruce Fairplay. <gasps> what? Mr. Fairplay, are you currently indebted financially to the accused? Uh, no, well, it's, it's barely worth it being called a debt. According to this ledger, you owe 20 guineas. Not an inconsiderable sum of money, wouldn't you say? Ah! Well, what of it? Let's suppose Mr. McGilded were to be found guilty of murder. What would become of your debt in that case? Mm, these documents state that the loan agreement is forged between two individual parties. Therefore, were the creditor, the defendant here, to be sentenced to a capital punishment, all outstanding debts which arose them would be annulled. They would cease to exist. Oh, right, I forgot about the death penalty. Don't clip that out of conscience. Cease to exist? Mr. Fairplay, is it not the case that you claimed in your testimony to have seen something you never in fact saw in a devious attempt to annul your debt of 20 guineas to the defendant? <laughs> ah! Order! 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 Mr. Bruce Fairplay. Y yes my lord! Let me ask you again. And be aware that your answer may have most serious implications upon your future, sir. <laughs> did you or did you not see the precise moment in time at which the defendant is alleged to have thrust a knife onto the victim? <laughs> Your silence speaks volumes. You did not tell the truth in your testimony. All right, now let's not make a melodrama out of this. Perhaps I did uh, overstate the truth a pinch. A pinch? But it makes no difference. I definitely remember seeing blood on Mr. Gilded's hands. <gasps> Whew, both of them. Objection. And yet. Only one of the defendant's gloves, which we have here as evidence, is stained. Uh, so you keep saying. Sorry, Ron voice. Uh, I wonder if I might be allowed to speak, sir. Uh, go ahead, Mr. First. Well, the thing is, I think I remember seeing it myself, as it happens. Seeing what? Uh, the blood, sir. On the assailant's hands. I think, yes. I'm, I'm almost sure that it was on both of his hands, not just one. What? What? Well, then that would just prove that my client is, uh... That would just prove, that would just support my client's innocence because that would mean that it couldn't have been him because his gloves only have blood on one of the hands. He couldn't have killed the victim with both hands. It would appear that you're going to need further testimony from all you witnesses. This time, I would like to know precisely what you did and what you did not see. Do I make myself perfectly clear? 
<laughs> yes. Mr. Naruhoto, this is a good news. The course of the trial seems to have shifted slightly at last. Yes. And we finally have a chance to turn things around here. A real turnabout trial. Roll credits. What the witnesses really saw. There was blood on both hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. However, I, I suppose you might say that I didn't see the exact moment the stabbing transpired, if that matters. I remember seeing the knife, and I remember seeing both of the attacker's hands with both of them. I didn't actually see anything myself. No, not until I heard that scream. Anyway, the fact remains. There can't have been anyone else inside that carriage, or we would all have seen. This, really? Uh, it's kind of dark and snowy. Well, lo and behold, in truth of fact, what one of you was witness to the crucial moment of the crime was perpetrated. I apologize, my lord, but honestly, ugh, there was no one else inside that carriage when the man's hands were covered in blood. Ugh, that mission criminator is just about to say we saw the man do it. That's really not what testimony is about. Let's just examine the interior of the omnibus once more. The victim's fresh blood is clearly visible on the seat, corroborating the witness's accounts. In other words, there was no substantial nor significant change in the facts of the case. <sighs> Very well. Your cross-examination, please, counsel. Yes, my lord. Do you have something up your sleeves, Naruhodo? Probably not. Damn. What the witness really saw? There was blood on both hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. Hold it! No, the evidence tells us otherwise. You have gloves the defendant was wearing on the night in question in the court record. I'm well aware of that, sir. But nevertheless, I know what I saw, and I stand by it. The man had blood on both his hands. He's defiant, even in the face of hard evidence. He's steadfastly refusing to admit that he might be mistaken about what he saw, but why? Your reasoning is dire. What? One hand or two, the salient point remains unchanged. Minutes after the grim crime, the victim's blood dripped guiltily from the accused's fingers. Hmm. However, I suppose you might say that I didn't see the exact moment the stabbing transpired, if that matters. Hold it! Don't try to downplay this! Whether or not you saw the exact moment of the crime is a matter of fundamental importance, as well you know. Ah, but, for crying out loud, we all know that no one else could possibly have done it. If I was just... Eh, trying to save us all some time. <laughs> you have a loan of 20 guineas outstanding with the defendant, do you not? <laughs> Had you hoped to release yourself from that financial burden by ensuring the defendant was found guilty? I, well, uh, that's not entirely not what I was hoping for. Uh, I just lost a little guinea or 10 when I backed the wrong horse in the derby. That's, that's all. <sighs> I was going to win it all back. There's a fixture this weekend. That's a sure thing. You took out a loan to bet on a game. A little guinea of ten. I'm a banker. No one bets an eye for borrowing a little spending money for the weekend. I think you may have revealed rather more about your character than you bargained for, sir. This witness's scruples are not on trial here. Proceed to the next witness. Is that really how it's supposed to work? I remember seeing the knife, and I remember seeing both the attacker's hands with bloods on them. Hold it! You definitely saw that too? Blood on both hands? Yes, sir. I mean, I, I know what you're going to say. What only one of Mr. McGilda's gloves has any sign of blood on it. That's right. The thing is, as far as I remember, sir, 
when I looked down and saw Mr. McGillard sitting beside the other fellow. I don't believe he was wearing any gloves, sir. He wasn't wearing these gloves? That's correct, sir. And I saw the blow on both his bare hands quite clearly. Hmm, it's true that the dark-colored stain on the dark-colored gloves wouldn't have been easy to see. I should point out that the police officer who apprehended the accused on the night in question reported that there was no trace of blood on Mr. McGilded's gloved hands. There wasn't blood on his hands. Hmm, this is puzzling indeed. This must be significant somehow. I'm sure of it. I didn't actually see anything myself. No, not until I heard that scream. Hold it! You didn't see anything? Oh, yes, sir. That is to say, no, sir. I didn't. Uh... Let me say first. Was probably unnecessary. I don't give a fuck. Uh, Excuse me. You look a bit dreary. Okay, nope. You'll know when it's when someone's given a nervous tick. It's not like, oh, it's you need to pay attention to the most subtle of nervous ticks, but then it's like, God, they're like fucking biting their hands off. Uh, oh no, I didn't. Continue. Very sorry about what I said before, so very sorry, yes. It was wrong of me to make up stories and say so I stabbed the man. Wouldn't you agree, sir? Pussy. <clears throat> I know what you want, Sinuitin, but I certainly wasn't making up stories. Still, to say you saw nothing isn't right either, is it? No, sir, I saw nothing at all. Mr. Bapo, you were driving your horses. At the very least, you, um, you must have enjoyed a good view of London streets. Oh, please. You didn't even see that. It was so cold that night, see? I was all I could do to keep myself from passing out, sir. Yes, my head was fairly frozen solid, sorry to say, sir. Why aren't you a fucking coachman? It would seem prudent to avoid travel on the last omnibus service of London's cold winter nights. Beppo! Uh. Anyway, the fact remains, there can't have been anyone else inside the carriage or we all would have seen. Hold it! And everything you saw the incident was through the skylight on the roof of the omnibus? That's right. It was fiercely cold that night, but the glass wasn't frosted over. Oh yes, I remember I was shivering, it was so bitter. That's not what I... Which rather begs the question of why the pair of you were sitting on the roof deck in the first place. Well, I don't know about this young fellow, but I couldn't enter the cabin. Oh, why not? It was locked from the inside. I tried knocking, but no one opened the door. It was locked? That's right, and it's a public bus service, for pity's sake. Not what I call fair play. Oh, yes, I had exactly the same experience. I tried knocking, but the gent inside just gestured at me to clear off. So I had no choice but to climb up there to the roof deck and look down longingly into the warm cabin below. Well, I can assure you I wasn't just looking down, I was glaring. Light and hot. And that's precisely what I can tell you with absolute confidence. That if there wasn't anyone else in that cabin, I would have noticed. Unequivocal, I would say. I'm not sure about these two witnesses. Did they really have seen everything inside the cabin through the skylight? That they would have seen everything. It was light up. It was lighted up. Let me say first. Um, I think... Could they have seen everything inside the cabin? They had to. It was lit and up. I suppose they would have had a bird's eye view from the roof. And birds generally have very keen eyesight, so... That is... Thank you, that's all I clear. Does... Nope, nope, that's not it. Ugh. They would not have been able to. Allow me to confirm one thing, Mr. Fairplay. 
you were riding this omnibus and witnessed the events in the cabin through the skylight in the floor on the upper deck. Is that right? That's right, yes. In that case, there is a portion of the cabin interior that would have been out of sight from you. What? Uh, by golly! Uh, really? Obviously, at this stage, we can't say for sure. But the possibility cannot be denied that at the time of the incident, there could have been another passenger in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Objection! He was hiding in the compartment under the seat. Enough hypocritical meandering, my Nepanese friend. The prosecution demands that you substantiate your claims. After all, the scene of the crime is here, in the flesh. The wood. In the wood. Omnibuses aren't made of flesh, you dumbass. Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's demand. Oh! You will identify the eye on this cross-sectional plan of the omnibus. Where exactly the omnibus are you suggesting that this potential extra passenger could have been situated? Uh... Let me say first... Um, in here. No, that ain't right. In here? Both rows of seats on the roof face in the direction of travel. Whereas the seats in the enclosed cabin face each other. Which means... Yes. The visible part of the cabin, which passengers on the roof deck can see through the skylight, <gasps> is as I've drawn here. Oh! That's right, my lord. As you can see, the seat opposite the one on which the victim and his attacker were sitting is obscured from view. In other words, if someone had been sitting on that seat, it's quite possible that these witnesses would have been completely unaware of it. Grrr! Objection! It's quite possible some phantom was sitting there. You Nephanese have a forbidden habit of obscuring the truth with ambiguity. Why are you so racist? No, never mind, stupid question. I can go with the prosecution's rejoinder. In a British court of law, evidence is paramount. As is racism. I cannot entertain this conjecture, the counsel. That is, unless you are able to put a name to this mysterious passenger to whom you allude. Can you, Mr. Norhado? I honestly don't know. Who could it have been? Who could have been in the other seat, which was out of sight from the witnesses on the roof deck? Uh, let me save. Your Honor, the defense is safe, Scumman. No one looks a tattletale prosecution. I have an inkling. Rumi! I understand, my lord. That defense would like to put forward a name. You are a fool. That response was a desperate attempt by a man who has no notion but of his own limitations. A toast to hard lessons not yet learnt. Let us not delay, counsel. The defense is still to name the passenger in the other seat. This could be it. This could be the chance I've been waiting for to turn the trial in my favor. On that night, on the night of the murder, the person occupying the seat in the omnibus cabin that was obscured from view was... Oh. Stronghart. Mason. It well, wasn't any of them. They were on the top. Was it? Thoroughly intimidated man. This guy? Take that! Sealed in the blind spot of the cabin that night was none other than this unexpected passenger. Nope. Rude. Do, 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 do. I have an idea. Maybe it was the victim. Like, that does seem to be the 
shit that they would come up with. It's like, I just think of wild logic because I have no idea what, what they, what, like, uh, riddles this game has. It's like, try to put myself in the mind of the people who wrote this. Take that! Maybe it was no one. I'll just have to try. Gotta cross all my I's and dot all my T's with a little heart. I don't know. Ugh, I have literally no idea. But as a proud citizen of the Japanese Empire, you will look to the sky and walk on, making sure all signs of tears are gone. Go on. This isn't just a case of going on, Miss Suzato. All right, then. I'll go on. That's a scare... That offense would like to put forward a name. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so... I like that now you can save at this spot, because like in the previous games, you weren't able to save while you were told to present evidence. Okay, obscured from view. It was... So, it wasn't the victim, it wasn't that guy, it uh... Could it have been... Could it have been Veppo? How do we know he was ex driving? Maybe he was lying about the whole thing. Stop. Stop insulting my head. My head isn't that bad. <laughs> Magnus? That. What? What the f actual shit? Passenger in the enclosed cabin that the witness on the roof deck failed to see has to have been Mr. Magnus McGilded. M Mr. McGilded? What are you talking about, counsel? That's the name of the defendant. <sighs> Objection. What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets, but enough talk. How about you? If I desecrate this chamber by smashing my hallowed chalice, do forgive this courtesy. How many hollow chalices do you have? Lord Van Zix. People talk of these tiny island nations of the Far East as having a learning and culture of their own. But I see they use the terms ill-advisedly. What are you trying to say? Let me explain in terms that even a student of an artless backwater such as yourself might understand. Artless backwater? We have hentai! When the bloody scene unfolded, the victim and his assailant were sitting side by side. Multiple witnesses have attested to the fact. It's the very premise on which this case is built. Objection. But that premise may be wrong. What? If the victim really was sitting beside Mr. McGilded, it creates an inconsistency that can't be reconciled in any way. What inconsistency, counsel? The defendant's gloves, my lord. Both witnesses made the same testimony. They claimed there was blood on both hands of the person sitting next to the victim. Objection! Yet we know the truth to be otherwise. Only one glove bears the gory remains. Objection. The point is... Even in the face of this irrefutable evidence, both witnesses have maintained their stance. Yes, their testimony remains unchanged. Exactly. They both adamantly swear that they clearly remember seeing blood on both hands of the assailant. In short, their memory of events is correct, and their testimony reveals the truth. It was somebody else sitting beside the victim that night, a third party we have yet to identify. And the victim's blood was on that pastor's hands. 
Both of them. Objection. And who was this third party? Obviously, the true culprit. <gasps> Extraordinary. Order, order, order. What exactly postulation? Objection. Well, the defense's postulation is just that. Nothing more than conjecture. The witnesses have clearly stated that they saw the accused. Objection. But when elaborating on his testimony, Mr. Fairplay said the two of them were wearing hats and I couldn't exactly make out their faces. Mm, yes. The tops of their heads were obscured by the roof. I could see the rest of them, though. Yes, that's right. Both gents were most certainly hatted. Hatters do tend to notice such things, sir. And what particular styles of that hat did the two gentlemen sport, Mr. First? I'm afraid I don't remember. <sighs> do you call yourself a hatter? The style of hat makes no difference. There is no third passenger in that cabin. How can you be sure? Because if there had been, the accused, Mr. McGilded, would undoubtedly have us offered to dispose the fact. Unless, that is, you are proposing an even more preposterous explanation. That the accused failed to even notice the presence of the true culprits in the very cabin in which she traveled? Ah! He could have been asleep. Oh, he's right. If there was another person traveling the enclosed cabin of the omnibus, it's inconceivable that Mr. McGilder would have been unaware of it. Order! There is clearly a simple solution to this problem. Bring the accused, Mr. McGilder, to the stand. Well, what say you, counsel? The prosecution objects, my lord. On what grounds? As a suspect, he will have already made a false statement to the police. But, but what if there's some reason why he's unable to speak freely? Magnus McGilded is no undeducated ruffian. If it is indeed, turns out that the man has been withholding information, you can be sure it will have been a most deliberate act. Counsel for the defense, what is your opinion? My lord? Should we ask Mr. McGilda to testify or not? Demand his testimony! Yes, we need to hear what has, he has to say in order to find out the truth. <sighs> the defense would like to call Mr. McGilda to the stand. Huh. In that case, I would like to hear the opinion of the jury. Ah, yes, um, I need a little time to consider this. If you ask me, I think we should hear what Mr. McGillard has to say. Get the man out here, I say. It would be utterly illogical not to hear his testimony. When something is doing, get it done. That's how I run things at the guild. Even what the patron of my favorite little park has to say. Oh yes, that would be lovely. Yes, the jury says the man must be hurt. Very well. The court will hear the defendant's testimony. Bailiff, show the defendant to the stand at once. Making jury duty. Now, maybe what actually happened that night will finally become clear. Oh, is this the end of part two? Let's proceed as we resumed. I need to check. No, we're still in part two? Hmm. Really weird. Mr. McGilded, have you been listening to the discourse of the day? Oh, you do not want to listen to discourse. Oh, to be sure what I to be sure I have, my lord. There are now two matters on which the court desires to hear from you. The first is whether or not there was a third party with you in the omnibus cabin, as proposed by the defense. The second is that if such a person was indeed present, why did you conceal that fact from the police? Remember to make- Be glad, no, it's not my nature to hide anything at all. 
Just answer the question, please. He has a better poker face than most witnesses, so I'll give him that. The truth of the matter is, I have been desperate about this all along. Do I tell you all, or keep me mouth shut? Tell us what, Mr. Tell us what, Mr. McGilded. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Sorry, I had to. Uh, photosynthesize. The fine fellow represented me is absolutely right. In the carriage on the night with myself and the other men, there was another passenger. Is it true? Aye, and twas me who helped the little urchin get away after it all happened. You... What?! Little urchin. No, Agnes McGillian. That convenient excuse can't save you now. I'm truly sorry, so I am, my Lord Van Zeeks. I'm sure you'll be wanting to know why I said nothing when I was taken away by the police. I do be having a very good reason, I assure you. Which was? Well, the little child was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and not in any way involved, you see. It was a kid. I swear to God, am I going to have to incriminate a child? This is... This is late. This is early 19th... This is early 20th century England. They haven't abolished the death penalty for children. Children, they, they've just gotten... They've only stopped hanging children for the devious crime of stealing spoons. What? If the police had known the wee one was there, they'd have assumed she'd done it. They'd have hauled her into this here courtroom just like myself. I was only trying to spare her that. Young hearts and young minds are easily damaged, my lord. A little child. Hmm. And who was this young child of whom you speak? That? I don't know. You don't know? Aye, well, the wee teen just happened to be in the carriage that night. I never saw her before or since. Objection! We have absolutely no reason to believe this man. A prosecution calls for the witness's statements to be disregarded by the court. You know, I would have been surprised. If the action isn't here in this courtroom as we speak, listen into the proceedings. What? Bang! Ah! Smoke! Ah! Fire! There's a fire! Look! Someone's trying to get away! <coughs> After them! It's, it's no use! I can't see anything. What is going on? Be careful, Mr. Naruhodo. Cover your face! Ah! Bailiff, don't let the accursed escape! Secure the omnibus! <coughs> yeah. Dad! I hear my call in emergency recess! Bailiff, ensure the defendant is in custody and clear the courtroom. To be continued, we were hurriedly removed from the smoke-filled courtroom by the bailiff. Amid scenes of chaos as people stumbled over one another in their desperation to flee the chamber. We had no idea what was happening. All we knew was that, for the time being at least, the trial was suspended. To be continued. To be continued! Let's fucking go! Save. Look at that. Part three. And we will do that next time.